Matthew 24. Well, let's go right to verse 15, where Jesus is, in general terms, talking about the coming of the day of the Lord in the end. He does say in Matthew 24, 15, specifically, when you, speaking to the disciples, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now, the abomination, now that's Remember last time how we talked about Joel, how he looked backwards upon a locust plague and used that as predictive of the horrors of the day of the Lord. So looking backward to an event can be a teachable moment for those thinking about the future. And in the same way, what Jesus seems to do in, ask, in, in answering the disciples' question, again back in Mark 13 and now in Matthew 24, what will be the sign of the end? Good question, we all wonder. Jesus purposely goes back to a very popular book at that time period, which was the book of Daniel. And he says, when you see the abomination of desolation. Now in Daniel 11.31, and also in chapter 12, there is a mention specifically of an abomination or an abominating sacrilege or something like that. The, the phrase is actually quite difficult, but it's some kind of event that, again, in Daniel predicting it, uh, happened actually in 168 when the Assyrian or the Syrian king Antiochus IV uh, brought a meteorite dedicated to the Greek god Zeus uh, into the temple that had been um, remade at this time in 168 BC, mid second century BC, by the Jews, the Maccabean Jews, and he desecrated the temple. Well, that is the event of Daniel 11.31. And so that event, of course, 200 years later, Jesus is now referring back to that event. And he basically says, when you see that event, then run for the hills. And we'll talk more about uh, the end of uh, Matthew 24 and 25 next time. But notice again what Jesus is doing is what Joel did. He is looking back at, at, at a very famous event in Jewish history, a very local Jewish, in fact, Judean event. And then he's predicting how to look forward to the end or the day of the Lord, as we have talked, the, the day of Yahweh. So let's talk about this event here and how it could give us a predictive understanding of what to look for in the future. As I first said, um, this is a very local event, a very historical event. It's, it's something that everyone could look back upon and remember that day when the temple was desecrated. Notice, too, how we are right back to that old story we've been talking about, that this is a, this is a challenge between the one God that creates and the many gods that are created. And so the challenge of this moment was when one of these gods was placed into Israel's temple. And if that's the case here, I think it's predictive again of what's going to happen here, right? That the event that Jesus has his disciples look back upon is the, uh, the use of or the appeal to the worship of another god, in this case Zeus, that I think Jesus is predicting to come in the future. Uh, thirdly, it's a very destructive idea. Again, uh, even Luke in the parallel passage here just says, when you see the armies surround Jerusalem. So my thought would be that at least we could apply the destructive nature of this moment. This is the beginning of the Maccabean revolt. That, uh, that what we have here on the forward-looking version of this is going to be something that is, again, other God-related, it's going to be potentially very destructive to the human race. And there, again, we get the wars and rumors of war ideas. Uh, notice Jesus then even says, and I find this interesting, he says, don't fight. Don't, don't, don't pick up your, um, your gun or your sword. Get out of town. Run out of town. Because the point is, once you start a cosmic war, it's one thing to you know, fight in a war that is over political issues or land or something, but this is a cosmic issue. This is God, this is Yahweh versus the gods. And I, I think what Jesus is saying is, there is no way as, for, for, for you as humans to compete against a um, cosmic war that is going to be happening apparently on the earth. What's interesting, again, notice the backward versus the forward look. Um, in AD 40, 
Caligula will uh, attempt to put a statue of himself in the uh, temple of Israel. He dies, he's assassinated before he's able to do it. But had that, e that event happened, the people, we're in about a uh, AD 30 here when Jesus says this, all the events that are in this prediction of the 168 would have happened in 40, but um, it was a close call. My point is that Jesus could be predicting not just events in the future, uh, AD 70, I can't draw it here, but also of course AD 70 is one of the more famous, uh, if not the most famous uh, event in the history of Israel, also repeated in 135 AD when the temple is destroyed by Rome. Uh, 135 uh, Jews are wiped out almost entirely from the city of Jerusalem, so forth. The point being that there are going to be future events that reminisce to the historical event of the abomination of desolation. So when we are thinking of the future, and again, we are somewhere in here today, what are we to take of Jesus' words? Uh, Paul will say in about AD 50, right about in here, in 2 Thessalonians 2, that there will be a man of lawlessness that will come in the end. Again, he's been given apparently special revelation by God on that level. And so what we have in the end then, when we come to Matthew 24, 15, this great prediction of the future, and I would recommend it is the one item that Jesus stopped and told his disciples to watch for, that when it comes to knowing when the end will come, and again, this does bring in the new world order according to Isaiah 65 and 66, that when the day of the Lord comes, the one predictive element that we can be looking for in modern day, um, and you know, reading our newspapers looking for, will be some kind of a cosmic event in which a, uh, a created deity is worshiped in such a way, apparently so publicly, possibly even in the land of Israel, something like this, that we see destruction on the um, uh, uh, coming, immediate destruction, and there is no other recourse than to simply cower. Uh, that seems to be uh, the, 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 the one future event that Jesus uh, warned us to watch for. I do find it interesting that again, maybe this is just the way God intended uh, Jesus' prediction to run or to work, and that is that every generation, uh, including my own, I remember back in the 60s, uh, the 70s with Gorbachev, or uh, the 80s and the Iron Curtain, uh, you name it, every generation uh, has someone or a, a, a situation that they think is the abomination that causes desolation. And so maybe God has ordered this, that it is a, um, it's, a re it's, it's a recurring theme in the history of mankind that we are watching for, that we are waiting for, this one great event that, yes, truly will be a one-of-a-kind uh, predictor of the day of the Lord. Thank you.